of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning, Father. We offer this Mass this morning for all the intentions already mentioned. We also pray for the intentions of each and every one of us here present. We ask God Almighty to bless us, to meet us at the point of our needs, and also to grant the special intentions of all who have requested our prayers for them. We pray for our country, Nigeria, for peace to reign, for the development and success. We pray for our leaders to commend them into the hands of God. We ask that God in his goodness will be particularly be merciful to us and save us from war, from calamity, and from further decay. We also pray that God in his goodness will grant divine healing to all who are sick and divine intervention to all who are going through one difficult to your challenge of the other. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Let us now come to find our sins and beg God for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have made really a sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my thoughts, through my thoughts. Through my most previous thought. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us life everlasting. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. As we recall year by year the mysteries by which through the resurrection, through the restoration of its original dignity, human nature has received the hope of rising again. We earnestly beseech your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate in faith we may possess in unending love through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, the high priest rose up and all who were with him, that is, the part of the Sadducees. And filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the common prison. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all these words of this life. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and taught. Now the high priest came and those who were with him and called together the council and of the cities of Israel and sent to the priest to have them brought. But when the officers came, they did not find them in the prison and they returned and reported. We found the prison securely locked and the sentry standing at the doors. But when we opened it, we found no one inside. Now, when the captains of the temple and the chief priests heard this verse, they were much perplexed about them, wondering what, wondering what this would come to. And someone came and told them, the men who we put in the prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain with the officers went and brought them, but without violence. For they were afraid 
of this tool. The word of the Lord. The Lord in one court and the Lord heard him. always in my mouth. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast. The humble shall hear and be glad. Glorify the Lord with me. Together let us praise his name. I sought the Lord and answered him. From all my terrors he said to me. Glory Look towards him and be radiant. I let your face not be abashed. The lowly one called and the Lord led him and rescued him from all his distress. The, 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 the angel of the Lord is encamped around those who fear him to rescue them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who seeks refuge in him. Early in the morning, I thought, 
when the high priest and his companions arrived, they commended the Sanhedrin, the full senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the jail to have them brought in. But the court officers who went did not find them in prison. So they came back and reported. We found the jail securely locked and the guards stationed outside the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. When the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests heard this report, they were at a loss about them as to what this would come to. While they were still trying to understand what has happened, how the men managed to disappear from inside a securely locked jail. Someone came in and reported to them, the men whom you put in prison are in the temple area and are teaching the people. Dear friends, our service today reminds us of an eternal truth. God never turns his back on his children. Never. No matter what you may be going through, God will never turn his back on you. God is a strong defender of the poor, the weak, and the marginalized. God never turns a deaf ear when the innocent calls out to him. As Jesus tells us, as Jesus tells uh, Nicodemus in today's gospel passage, people always prefer darkness to light. It is a human problem. People will rather do what is wrong than do what is right. People are afraid to be, to be good, but nobody is afraid to be right. They saw the light of Christ, but see what they did to Jesus Christ. They saw the light of the disciples, common fishermen, now working miracles. They tried again to quench this light. To this day, the story is not different. Someone said that good people don't last. Why? Somebody is so good. All of a sudden, you hear the person is dead. Somebody is so good, he's doing so many things, he's creating a lot of things. And all of a sudden, enemies from everywhere. Jesus Christ said this. He said, The people of this world, light came into this world. They saw the light, but they prepared darkness. So, as Christians, we're, we're like endangered species. When I, when I mean Christians now, I don't mean church goers. There's a big difference between a Christian and a church goer. As Christians, those who are truly walking in the light. We are always under attack from the people who belong to the world. Just as the disciples, Peter and James and, and John and other disciples, they were under attack. So imagine, what, what evil did they do? They, 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 they cured the people. They cured the people. That was why they were, they were being persecuted. That was why they were put in jail. And God said, ah, ah, for one thing. God released them. Miraculously sent an angel to release them from prison. So that the chief priests and the Sadducees and those who put them in prison, we, their, their eyes will not realize that the God they send cannot be locked up in chains or padlocks and all that. When we let our light shine, let us not assume that people will love us. No. When we dedicate our social media accounts, for instance, to purely spiritual things, to purely spreading the gospel of Christ, let us not expect to gain many followers. Uh, no, we're not going to gain many followers. If it is spiritual things that we want to use our social media accounts to do, we're not going to get many likes. We're not going to get many comments. But by the time, we dedicate our social media handles 
to the evil things, to worldly things, to the things of this world, of course, we will to get thousands and millions, millions of followers. Children of God, this should not discourage us. This shouldn't discourage us. The fact that the world prefers darkness to light does not mean we should not let our light shine. Jesus already told us, you are the light of the world. Just look at this church now. Some bulbs are not working. You see how, how somehow it is. It's not, it, 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 it's dark somehow. It's not bright. It's not bright. You can imagine the total space of this church. Comes the number of bulbs. There are not many. And just because of the few ones now, you can count the few ones that decided not to let their light shine. See the way the whole atmosphere changed compared to yesterday. So you may assume, oh, eh, I don't tell yourself, eh, bad people everywhere, bad people everywhere. Yeah, bad people everywhere. But if you, one, as one person, decide not to let your light shine, you contribute to the darkness of the world. You contribute to the darkness of the world. Don't give up your dear friends in Christ. They say, if you cannot beat them, they join them. Don't join them. You don't have to join them. If you cannot beat them, continue to shine. Continue to shine. It's not you that will even beat them. It's the power of God that is working through you that will beat them. You may be discouraged right now. It may seem as if the enemy is succeeding. But fear not. God knows how to fight for his children. God never turns his back on us so long as we remain faithful to him. The Lord is my shepherd. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For that and with me, the rod and the staff, they comfort me. Psalm 23, verse 4. May God bless his words in our hearts. that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Oh, oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere, at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord, 
but in this time above all to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, we will come with pastor joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are claimed. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this place to pray by sending down your spirit upon them that is you for us, so that they may become for us the body and Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave it thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, they took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving time that you have heard us wanting to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by faith in the body and the blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. The Lord of Francis, our Pope, Augustine, our Pope, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are falling asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Down to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, the Spouse, we the blessed apostles and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages. We may marry to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, he said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have been viewed with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Good news. I've been able to secure a date in the Archbishop's diary. I uh, is still tentative for now, but I'm very sure we are going to get that date. Uh, on the this coming Sunday, the Archbishop will be dedicating St. Andrew Catholic Church to Puyoko. On the 2nd of May, he will be dedicating St. Mark Catholic Church to Puyoko. And NFPC, therefore. So on the night, he said, okay, let's leave on the night. The other Sunday, which is May 16th, he has agreed that uh, he will be coming here for confirmation. So May 16th, which is like a month from now, the Archbishop will be coming here. It's still tentative, but I hope and I pray uh, that nothing else will come up. So 16th of May, let us prepare. Candidates for confirmation, let us prepare. And uh, since we are going to host the Archbishop, it means that uh, we are going to prepare to welcome him. There are two things he's coming to do. Number one is confirmation. Uh, we have candidates, we have we had candidates since almost two years ago, now, three years ago. And if not for the COVID-19 storm, the Archbishop would have come here some years back. Uh, so they will come and do the confirmation, visit us, check the parish record, see how we are doing, and uh, also lay the foundation stone for the church building. Uh, once again, I appeal to Ralph uh, to assist with pillars. I haven't seen any, uh, I don't know, Julius, have you seen any from within the church yet. And I know that God, God Almighty will provide for us. God will bless us. God will bless us. Our friends from uh, home and abroad who are not uh, physically here present, they have been uh, contributing pillars. Uh, we did last Sunday and this Sunday, we have gotten, let me say, about 10 pillars already. Uh, so, we are looking forward to we. Uh, we will be saying that we get church. Uh, please, let us be generous. And God Almighty will bless us, will provide for us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and bear with you all the both now and forever. Go for